Um, I'm Lloyd Rutledge. I'm from the Open University in the Netherlands, and um, I'm presenting what I did for Semantic Media Wiki for uh, education. Um, I've presented about three times before here, and it's always been a great pleasure, and I usually present research work that takes a, a clean academic approach, usually applying semantic web ontologies to following a specific approach to formally generate um, semantic media wiki interface. Um, this talk isn't like that. Um, other people come here with talks for, for systems that have been built with, with, with a lot of, through a lot of people, for a lot of people, to provide a distributed system that a lot of people can use to keep themselves very well organized. This isn't one of those talks either. This talk is about a guy, me, who had a job and he needed to get the job done and Semantic Media Wiki was a way to get some things quickly implemented that needed to uh, get done. But of course, I also have an academic context. I hope I can set some of this work in an academic context. But for this work, I was just someone who needed to make a whole bunch of grades for a whole bunch of students as quickly as possible. And I knew how to use Semantic Media Wiki, and so that helped, and this is what I did. Um, as a teacher, I'm responsible for these three courses, among other courses. There is model-driven development, of course with a paper test for computer science students to show that they've learned how to model, and in particular to make models for uh, system development. These expertise gets um, demonstrated in the Ontwikkelpraktikum um, in Dutch. The rough translation is development practical. I call it practicum here. Um, and this is applying what was learned in MDD. And unlike MDD course, for the, uh, for the practicum, the students deliver a database. They use a tool, Cathedron, and they deliver a database. So these are two quite different um, assessment situations. An exam on paper versus a project, the database that students delivered. Um, I also teach an, an optional course, Semantic Web, just a fewer number of students. I can focus more on each of them. And last but not least, I supervise a lot of graduate students that do theses, and a lot of their work has ended up at uh, previous Semantic Web, Semantic Media Wiki, excuse me, conferences, and hopefully that'll keep going. Um, but first, what I practically had to do as a worker to get things done using Semantic Media Wiki. Here's a course, Model Driven Development. It teaches a model driven development approach toward building systems. Uh, this has also showed up in some of my research, uh, including uh, research I presented here at previous conferences. This, you make a model, you show as a student that you can make good models that are appropriate for helping develop systems. Here's the tool that gets used for it. The tool is called Cathedron. This tool helps you uh, set up data models and Cathedron also exports those data models as databases. And then I as a teacher, um, I'm sorry, in the next course in Ontwikkelpraktum, I get these databases. But for now in model driven development, the students are learning how to model using this tool. And then it's time for the exam. They get a question like this. They're given a case study, um, a situation that they need to implement with some sample paper data that's already available. The students then need to do their exam. And we, as the assessors, have the answer that, that we think is most appropriate for the case study. And then we look at um, yeah, uh, 30 to 50 different sheets of paper with sketches that students have made answering questions like this. And then we need to assess them as quickly as possible. And when I started with this course, uh, the teachers would print out, um, my, my colleagues who were teaching me how to grade, they would print out a sheet like this and they would draw circles all over it saying this is five points and this is 10 points. And if they did this, they get a point. And then what I would do is just like them, I would mark up 50 sheets of paper set it all on a spreadsheet and then throw the pieces of paper away. But I thought, I work with Semantic Media Wiki and, and maybe I can make this uh, easier. So what I did for this course was I set up all of the data that needs to be used to grade something like this using semantic forms. Um, I took more or less the, the, um, the grading sheet that my predecessors had. I, I identified several areas. All of this needs to add up to 100 to get the 100% for the, uh, the top grade. 
And you, I took a basic nested approach that mo typical paper-based exams follow. And then for each component, I identified options, and each option was associated with the grade. And I pulled down men menus for a lot of these options to determine which of each possibility ended up being applied to. So I, I set up semantic forms to, to set a logical order in grouping of the components that were to be assessed. And then for each component, a pull down menu for determining which of the comments I thought was most appropriate for that particular component in the exam. Each of these comments is associated with the grade because each of these comments has its own page with its own form that sets up what the name is, what the response is going to be, what percentage of the grade it is. Um, and this sits on a page with other forms that provide other information. And then when I'm done for um, a page, and what we have here is this, this exam, and then there's a particular student whose um, private information will be withheld, of course, and this is the assessment that I did for him. And this assessment here, with various templates, looks at all of the um, values that were filled in with the previous form. It then takes the option for each component in the test and adds it all up to calculate what the grade is. And this grade then becomes the definitive grade for the student. Um, I also needed to put this in a summary of this in a spreadsheet. That's what we always had to do even before Semantic Media Wiki. And I don't have a slide for it, but I was able to take the data that I generated here and put it directly in the spreadsheet, whereas my predecessors with a simple copy paste of the, uh, the tabular data. Whereas my predecessors would fill in the spreadsheet by hand based on what they had marked up on the sheets of paper. Um, so this made me feel like I could go a lot faster. So anytime I grade an exam, I would look at it and I would just uh, click on the options for each of these, generate the grade, it would be output on the spreadsheet and I was done. Semantic MediaWiki helped, MediaWiki helped me do this job practically. So I applied it, uh, so these, these are the basic points that I wanted to make here. It's a paper-based exam. Um, I replaced ink on paper, pulled down, pulled down points were done, the grade was calculated. Another point about this system, which contrasts with the other system I made for the practical, is that here the structure of the assessment is pretty fixed. It's based on a paper, the student gets a very specific question, we expect a pretty specific answer for the student. We've calculated very rigidly what the student is allowed to answer, basically. So what we have here is a closed system. I know what all of the possibilities are, and I know exactly what grade is going to come from that. But in the next course is the practicum, and the students have a much broader assignment to, with a much broader amount of possibilities to make a model. They're basically designing an entire system out of relatively broad requirements. So the possibilities for what comes in the model are a lot broader. So this is more like assessing an essay than assessing, assessing a, a more structured type of exam. So this presented other challenges for me. But first, are there questions about what I did for model-driven development? If not, I'll keep going. So there were a, a bunch of different assignments in this class. I'll focus on one of the assignments. What the assignments were was uh, assignment four is perhaps the most important one. This is much like what the students were tested for in the model-driven development exam. They were asked to create a model. But what's different here is the model, like I said, is much bigger. And also, this model is delivered as a database. So instead of being on paper, it's machine readable. And I end up uh, exploiting that. There, there are other assignments as well. They also need to do a large data conversion. The result of that is also a database. I can also automatically analyze that database as a part of the, uh, the assessments. And I do that as I'll let you guys see later on with uh, sending queries to the database to look for patterns for what I'm looking for and sometimes patterns of what I don't want to see the students do. And that helps me to determine what the grade becomes. So when I started doing this, I, um, the, my predecessors would simply look at the, the database by hand, basically read through it, have a general idea of how they felt about it, write down a bunch of comments, and um, these comments would justify the grade. 
Um, so I started looking at comments that they generally came up with by looking at a lot of the answers they gave, and some of those comments were readily associatable with queries. So I set up SQL queries in the database, and they would show up as comments. And initially, I would just end up getting a text result like this, and I would look at it, and I could pretty quickly fill in a form like what you just saw. I'll see if I can skip to a form right away. So I'd take a form like this, and this is the basic input that I would use. Um, what's different with this is I really just have a list of comments that are either applicable or definitely not applicable or I haven't made up my mind yet. So none means haven't made up my mind. None sometimes also means this comment doesn't really apply anyway because of other comments that are nearby. And I say if something is definitely applicable, I give it a yes. If it's not applicable, I give it a no. This is a standard Boolean um, input for uh, semantic forms, if I'm phrasing it correctly. And <coughs> Then this gets add up, added up to give a number. And on basis of what the total number is, I assess the grade. Um, so what we have here is much more of a general observation-based system. The, the model-driven development exam was closed in terms of structure and possibility. This approach here is more open in that sometimes uh, as I go through looking at what people de I do for their assignments, pretty often I'll come up with a new observation that I either like or I think is positive or I don't like and I think is, is negative and, and undesired. And in this way, I can enter that new option into the system. But first, let me step back a bit. Um, so what I did here for the query was uh, I had a bunch of queries in SQL. And if a given query returned a result, then either, or sometimes it was off basis, if it returned a result or if it returned a zero as a count, then either a comment would get a yes or a comment would get a no. So it's basically a two by two table. For every query, I need to decide whether it was a zero or a number that got back triggers the result and what the result is, either a yes or a no on one of these comments. So what I have here is either yes or no applies. I set up the comments in an order so I can just quickly go through and click, 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 click. And it's an order that, for me, was natural as a grader assessing that assignment. Um, I also have on the sheet here links to the comment page, because each of these comments here sits in Semantic Media Wiki. It has its own page. Um, one of the pieces of data for it is what is the string here that gets given back to uh, the students. I apologize that, that these are in Dutch, but of course my students are in Dutch, and uh, that's the language we uh, communicate in. But I hope the general gist here is, uh, is understandable. Um, what these pages also have is a number, either a positive or negative integer, and that is, for me, an indication of how, how good I think it is that the student did something that triggered that comment or how bad. And at the end, those numbers would be added up to give a score. And basis on that score, I would give uh, an assignment. And this would be the result. After I fill in one form, I get this result back. Um, you see here, this is not really the best way to set it up. But here, I, for every comment for which there is either a yes or a no, I say what that was. What I also get are other things. This page for this student taking doing this assignment when the form is filled in, generates feedback to the student. It proposes a grade for me, and I, I don't have to agree with this grade, but this is what the system suggests based on the total number of comments that got added up. Um, and this is what happens to the comments. It tells me how many comments I've given either a yes or no on. And it says, well, actually, I think this is actually just the yes, excuse me. It's the number of comments that got a yes, and this is the total score that, that came from the, those comments. And on basis from that score, the system would propose a grade, and then I would decide whether I agreed with it or not. There's another form on the same page that then says what the actual grade is. So I fill in that form, and then I get a generated email link to the student. So I click on it, and in my email, email uh, system, I get an email for the student, and it says this to the student what their official grade is, the one I decided, not the system. And this list of comment here also gets put in that. Then I can send the email to the student. The student is informed. So all of these are all ways in which MediaWiki has simply helped me do the job that I've always been doing faster and quicker. So this helps me grade this one student for this one assignment quicker. 
Um, but what it also does is generate data for which I can do some simple learning analysis. Because um, up to now, I think I've graded about 200 students using the system for this one course. Now, a page that we have here is one of the comments. So this is for assignment four in the Omvikul Practicum, the practicum, and that is that the student neglected to set up a attribute, Boolean attribute for speed whether or not this particular, whether or not a um, particular um, invoice needed to be delivered quickly. Um, so what did I wrote here, I wrote the comment that the student gets back, sorry my point is not working, the comment that the student gets back, I put a minus two here, that that meant that I thought it was negative to a degree of min, mi, minus two, that the student neglected to make that attribute. And here I have a query of what students had that and what their grade was. And I see here that in general, students that made this mistake had an average of a lower grade for the enti entire assignment. And I can also see how many students uh, this, was, uh, this was applied to. Six, not a lot of, not very many students had this. And most of the students that did this did poorly in general. So this gives me as an assessor an indication of how effective this particular comment is in determining what the grade for the student should be. And forms let me enter, enter that very quickly. And templates around the forms perform a lot of um, communication for the student that happens for me a lot more quickly. And also general overviews on it. And this is how, um, th this, this is how the, uh, the template form looks and the query that I set up looks. So actually, this is a page for the assignment itself. I call it the grade sheet for the assignment. And one of the queries in there is for this assignment, what students have gotten what grades? And I end up getting a table like this. Um, with a bunch of um, queries, I get certain statistics, like how many students were graded, how many students have delivered. I still have some work to do, you see. Or, um, I'm here instead of grading papers. What the average grade was and what the spread was across all of the students for the grades. So this gives me an idea of, of how um, well spread this grading system is for these assignments. These are standard, simple learning analytic statistics that teachers like to look at. And I get a sortable table for um, what students have delivered, how many comments they gave, what their calculated grade was based on the sum of their comments, what the grade is that I actually gave them. And this gives me an idea of how much I want to maybe change this calculation. Um, it also gives me an idea of, of how well spread and how well balanced the general assessment calculation is. Are there questions about the Umvikul practicum, the practicum until now? So where this differed, the most important area where this differed is that this, this is a more open system. With model-driven development, if I feel I want to add a comment, sometimes that means I need to change the entire fixed structure and change how things are calculated. Here, if I need to add a comment, I just simply add a comment. I need to make sure it gets in the right place on the form page and on the template. And that I'm doing by hand. I have some ideas on how to automate that. But um, I can also add the comment and say what the string is that the student then reads about the comment and whether it's plus or minus on the total score. Zero is also an option, that it has no influence on the score itself. It's just something I thought I would tell the students to uh, give them more uh, uh, substantive feedback for what they've done. Um, so, and I'm hoping to go further with that open assessment comment approach with other courses that I teach, because most of my courses aren't like model-driven development. They are more broad assignment courses for which a wide variety of comments uh, could be appropriate. Ten minutes for it, okay. Um, semantic Web is a course I also taught. Not that many students. I didn't really use the wiki that much for assessment. Um, I tried using the wiki in the beginning as student assignments. I presented this, is it six years ago? Yeah, six years ago at 2010 Semantic Web Fall in Amsterdam. Um, when I first started it, it turned out not to be very suitable for students. Not that the wiki itself was bad, but it um, made the course too broad. I decided later just to focus on the semantic web using tools like this rather than making an interface for it. I also have students doing master's thesis work. Some of the results have been here at previous semantic, uh, semantic media wiki uh, conferences. Um, a typical one is make a semantic media wiki that does 
x. One student is working on using um, a rubric-based approach, and rubric is a but formalized way of doing fuzzier assessment on education. Another student is taking a purely administrative approach on how we administer our educational uh, policy. They make it all academic by applying some sort of formal logic, usually semantic web, and various academic models that apply to the uh, domain. Um, I'll, I'll spring to the, to jump to the last one. I have a student who's using patterns, like the SQL patterns I use, to find good and bad comments in a broader sense for a course on business rules. Um, and also, perhaps more wiki-oriented, is we're also doing research on automatically determining what properties get clustered together in certain info boxes or in forms, what order they are in the clustering. And, this, and uh, Yaron, there might be some answer here for you. You had concerns about how do we know what property goes to what class. The people on Semantic Web are intentionally vague about that for their reasons. But what we do here is we let them be vague, but we do, do our own analysis, because if you generate an interface, you really need to know which property goes on which box. So I have students who are automatically assessing, based on various forms of input, natural language, ontology, and now working on big data, how you can determine what is a reasonable mapping between properties and classes and what clustering and ordering the properties in the class should have to make the best interface. Now, Wolfgang is given the next talk, right? About quizzes. Now, this is not something I'm active in, but years ago when I was getting my um, teacher degree, I had to give, uh, do an assignment about setting up a multiple choice quiz. So um, again, I quickly set it up using um, Semantic Media Wiki. You see here that it's an old Firefox. You can even see the pixels in the screen dump. That's how old this is. And I simply set up a model where a bunch of concepts got definitions. And you could generate a multiple choice quiz by quizzing for concepts and quizzing for all definitions that were ever given to a concept and knowing which one was the right one. And in this way, I automatically generated a multiple choice quiz. Wolfgang probably has a more sophisticated way of doing this than I did, but that was a, a, a quick assignment that I had. So that's it. Um, the key points are hopefully clear. Semantic forms and semantic media wiki made it easier for me to quickly set up a way to get a job done that was originally done on paper predominantly. Are there any questions? Yes. That might be hard for you to answer. That, that last one's tricky, yeah. Now the question is, if I can paraphrase it for, for the video, is uh, have I thought about applying this to, to other types of uh, programming assignments, not just databases, but program code? And, uh, and I extrapolate that to anything that can be machine readable. And the answer is yes. Anything that a machine can read for which you have a way of querying for patterns. It, with code, if you're talking about code, with code it's a little trickier. You need to then compile it. It's a little tricky to get out patterns. But yes, you can do that. And other people in my department do work on intelligent feedback that I'm also getting into. And that sets up a whole different context for what you do with the patterns. Are the patterns there for formative or summative feedback? Do you actually determine the grade or just tell the student what you think? Is it there for self-assessment? That's another possibility. Fully automate then a self-assessment system for the student to, um, to teach his or herself how to do it and get automatic feedback about a work in progress that helps the student iteratively improve his or her work. Um, I think we have time for one question, maybe two questions. Clear? Oh, Yarn. Um, now, what the, the rubric is a, um, a hot topic in, in educational research lately. And all the rubric is, is um, it's a way to apply structure to grading 
very open general assignments. And the, the typical case is the essay. You get an essay, and you can't really set up a detailed spreadsheet for essays. But what you do with the rubric is you make a table, and the table has a whole bunch of uh, rows for points you want to assess, and the columns are basically um, in the American system, an F or a D or a B or a C or an A, or it's the numbered system in, in the, the European way. And, and for each of the, and usually it's four, a six or seven or an eight or nine, or a D, B, C or an A, an A, B, C or D. And for each of those, you say generally what you're looking for to, um, to for that point to give that particular grade. And that's, it's a table. We love tables, right? Um, so it's something you could set up in a structured data system. It's something you could turn into a form to, to fill in quickly. And it, it's also a bit more of an open approach. It's easier in a rubric to add additional comments as long as you put them in the right place in the table. And the student, uh, that the, the, the master student that's working on that, that is concerning himself with those, uh, those issues. So that's, that's a rubric. And, if I can, and my, my faculty likes rubrics a lot. Um, I think that they are also generally a good idea, fortunately. So I gain political points and might even make it more useful if I get the, what the student makes. Maybe I can present it next year. The, the rubric for uh, Semantic Media Wiki, the result from Hank's work here. One last question, or? Yes. Yeah, the question is about cluster analysis on different assignments. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, there are different ways I could interpret cluster analysis, but one of them is to see are there, are there continuing patterns? If there's a pattern that, a student, that students tend to repeat, you can ask yourself, um, it's sort of like reverse engineering of the queries that you make. If there's a pattern that happens a lot, you can ask yourself now, is this useful for assessment? Is it a good or bad one? Sort of like automatically generating the queries that, that make up the sheet. That also helps with fraud detection. You, you see, if, 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 a different student, if two different assignments cluster very well to each other, you can ask yourself now, are they actually the same work that has been played with to make it look like it's different? Are, are those the applications that you were considering for clustering when, when you're asked? I'd love to do it. I have no idea what the technology is at this point. But yeah, it would be fun to do that. And then we're basically reverse engineering and, and automating this to a large degree as well. That would be interesting to see. And with uh, machine readable deliverables from the students, uh, yeah, clustering would be applicable uh, to that. We have a data analytics um, um, master's program that we just started, business intelligence and data analytics with important courses in it. So I think my colleagues and I could potentially take that idea and do some interesting things with it and automatically generate interfaces that, that help people work in the discovered data patterns more quickly. Can I put a picture or a paper or a system even? Um, thank you. That's, a, that's an interesting idea. Shall we hear about quizzes? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you all.